thank Carolyn for inviting us. And today, uh, my student who's graduating, Miles, he actually finished his defense two weeks ago, and he's going to present his work about an R package that integrates the computational eight computational doublet detection methods, and it also includes some sixteen, I think real data sets for benchmarking doublet detection. And just for your information, Miles, after leaving UCLA, he will join the Loyola University of Chicago this summer. So Miles, thanks for doing this presentation for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, Jessica, for the introduction. And uh, uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very honored to be here to give uh, uh, a presentation of my recent work on uh, W detection. So uh, we developed an R package that, that integrates cutting edge computational W detection methods. So this project, this work is motivated by our previous benchmark study. And in those study, uh, we realized there are some uh, practical issues that we want to address uh, in this field so that we can provide uh, experimentalists uh, a powerful tool to, con to conveniently conduct and also benchmark that be that detection methods. So uh, first, let me give some introduction on uh, single cell RNA sequencing uh, technique. So ICRN-seq is an emerging uh, sequencing technology that reveals genome-wide gene expression at single cell levels. Uh, it can measure the expression up to tens of thousand genes in millions of cells. So uh, these figures uh, illustrate a very, uh, very uh, general uh, ICRC experimental pipeline. So usually we start from solid tissue and we do uh, this, uh, we dissociate the, uh, the tissue into single cells and isolate the single cells, try to capture them into single uh, reaction volume. And then in those e reaction volume, we extract uh, the RNA in each single cell and give them unique barcode. And then we amplify all those RNA or complementary DNA to get uh, our library uh, or sequencing library. Uh, and then we put those uh, genomic materials into sequencing machine, try to find for uh, each gene, how many of them can be detected in each cell. And finally, uh, we can obtain this uh, single cell RNA sequencing uh, data matrix. So basically you can, uh, in this data matrix, each row is uh, one cell and each column is one gene, or it can be uh, vice versa. So it depends on which uh, programming language you use, there are different convention people use. So basically it's a two dimension matrix. Um, and then after that, uh, we can do some downstream analysis on those uh, data sets. For example, we can, we can uh, do cell clustering to identify different cell clusters from ICRC data. So uh, ICRC data now is uh, widely used in uh, a lot of fields, including uh, cancer therapy, drug discovery, uh, uh, and uh, precision medicine, and many others. So however, there's a lot of challenges in uh, the analysis of such data sets. For example, uh, uh, ICRC data is high, uh, has very high dimensions. Uh, so the typical data set can include uh, more than 20,000 genes. And uh, the cell, uh, the, uh, the data size is also very uh, big. So uh, now we can have more than 1 million cells or the observation number can be larger than 1 million. Also, the data set is very sparse. Sometimes we can have more than 90% zeros in this uh, data matrix. Also, uh, because this uh, experimental pipeline, uh, we actually uh, sometimes will introduce uh, technical noise. Uh, for example, the doublets, um, and uh, which is our focus uh, uh, today. So here I want to introduce how uh, we can, uh, the experiments form doublet and how uh, it will affect, negatively affect our downstream analysis. So we know uh, the key part of single cell RNA sequencing is to capture single cell. So each cell in the experiment will be encapsulated in one reaction volume. And so such volume we call the singlet. So basically uh, you include one single cell. However, we, we can have so-called doublets 
when two or more cells are encapsulated into one reaction volume. So this figure illustrates how a uh, adapted form in this drop beat based experiments. So basically we have two pipes, uh, the, uh, the, the vertical one is cell flow, the horizontal one is uh, reaction volume or bead flow. So with, this, with, with these two flow interact in the middle, uh, each, uh, each empty uh, reaction volume will encapsulate one single cell so we can have those singlets and we can uh, uh, do sequencing on these singlets. However, there's some probability that you, for each uh, single, uh, for each uh, reaction volume, it includes two cells and then it will give you doublets. And uh, in theory, uh, people use a Poisson distribution to model the probability about, of how many cells you can include in those reaction volume. And, and uh, um, this distribution is controlled, is determined by different uh, experimental platforms. So in reality, we actually observed uh, up to 40% uh, doublet in some uh, data sets. Uh, of course, uh, this, if you want to have such high doublet uh, rates, which means there will be some problem in your uh, experiment. So, uh, but uh, we actually observe such high rate in real data sets. So doublet actually can confound or bias your downstream analysis because it introduce uh, artificial gene expression uh, in, your, uh, in your cells. For example, this figure is a trait uh, uh, the bias in downstream cell clustering analysis. So say in the, in the biological sample, we have actually have two clusters. Um, and uh, due, uh, however, due to the existence of dubbies, you can observe the third cluster, which include all the dubbies because dubbies uh, contain a combination of gene expression from two cells. So you will observe a unique gene expression, which included in the third uh, cluster, uh, you are falsely believe the sample include three clusters rather than two clusters. This example illustrates the bias in uh, cell trajectory analysis. So ideally, we will observe these two uh, trajectory uh, in our sample. However, due to the existence of dubbies, you will observe the combination of a gene expression from two cells. Therefore, you will observe this uh, bridge that connects these two branches which will falsely uh, lead to, uh, to your conclusion. You actually observe the third branch. So therefore, uh, how to remove all those subbits uh, is very important. So the, the, the ICRC seek uh, data analysis uh, community actually developed several different computational methods to uh, detect all those subbits. Uh, here, I, I briefly summarize them into five categories. And the first of the categories are mostly, mostly commonly used. Uh, the first one called Kenya's neighborhood based method. So in this method, you start from your original data set and you treat each, uh, each row as uh, one cell. And then you first randomly pick up two cells and add them together to generate artificial doublets, right? Uh, and then in next steps, you first define a, for each cell in your original data set, you define a neighborhood. And within this neighborhood, you can calculate the proportion of artificial doublets. And that proportion is your W score. So intuitively, if one so-called cells is a real doublet, then it should within its uh, neighborhood, it should include more and more uh, artificial dubbies because their gene expression should be similar. So therefore this W score can measure how uh, possible one cell is actually a real dubbies. And the second method is classification methods. So this method firstly still uh, generate artificial dubbies and merge the uh, original data sets with the uh, artificial dubbies and the train uh, binary classifi classifier uh, on this merge the data sets and they try to classify or differentiate between your original uh, single cells, so-called single cell and your, uh, your artificial dubbies and they use the predicted probability being dubbies 
to uh, as your W score. Still, higher W score means you are more likely have a real W. And then still we have other uh, three category methods, the statistical test method, deconvolution method, and ensemble methods. So in, all, in, all, in one of our previous study, we try to answer this question. Uh, so uh, despite current methods, uh, the field lacks guideline to uh, choose an appropriate W detection method for their analysis task. Therefore, we conduct the first systematic benchmark study on uh, computational W detection. So this is our um, uh, uh, research design. So basically, we, uh, uh, we, we collect nine cutting edge methods and we collect 16 real and uh, a real data sets with experimentally annotated W labels. And we also simulate over 100 synthetic data sets. Based on uh, the data sets and the methods, we execute each method uh, and try to uh, check their performance in terms of the overall W detection accuracy and the three key downstream analysis. Uh, cell clustering DG analysis and the cell uh, trajectory inference. And then we compare different methods in terms of their uh, computational efficiency. So uh, this is our previous work. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is the uh, result of our previous work. So basically we summarize the different methods in terms of their performance on different tasks and we found W the finder has the best detection accuracy and CXDS has the best computational efficiency. Uh, and uh, our work has been published in cell systems. So this is the background of our, uh, this uh, current work. However, um, in this uh, study, we realized there are some issues in computational W detection um, field. So firstly is we find that different methods actually have different installation uh, interface and the programming language, which means uh, if you want to use different methods, you have to um, uh, check their uh, usage on their website. And some of them are even developed on, uh, under different platform. So you have to know how to program on different platform. Uh, the second uh, issue is that uh, is about the benchmark itself. So we find that uh, most of the benchmark study are static, which means uh, you manually implement all your uh, benchmark tasks and compare the result and do the visualization. So this static design make uh, will will be easily out of date due to the rapid growth of computational methods in these fields. Uh, so whenever you have a new method, you have to recompare all. Uh, to compare this new method versus the cutting edge methods. So yeah, if you want to do this update, you, have, you will face a problem which is time consuming and tedious because different methods involve different programming language and you have to learn how to use different methods. Also, uh, it will involve uh, relative strong programming skills to compare all those methods on large scale data sets. So basically, uh, the problem can be uh, categorized into two categories. First one is, is it difficult to use uh, different methods? Uh, you have to uh, learn different program language. And the second one is any uh, static benchmark study. It's very easy to uh, out of date and to update them, you have to spend a lot of time. Uh, to address these two issues in W detection uh, field, we developed an R package W collection, and also we propose a pro pro protocol to uh, let researchers easily use this package. So basically this package integrates the installation and execution of cutting edge uh, W detection methods. It provides a unified interface for uh, W detection, not only W detection itself, but also the following downstream analysis and the visualization to compare different methods performance. And also uh, 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 
it can automate the benchmark of W detection methods. So you don't have to go through this painful uh, path to recompare all different methods. As long as the new methods, you can uh, in a very short time to know how it compares with the current best methods. Uh, so first, uh, yeah, next let me briefly introduce some key functionality of our package. Uh, the first one is, uh, it can automatically install, uh, currently we include eight W detection methods um, in R. So here, this is the list of those uh, different methods. So I, I also want to emphasize that among those methods, these two, W uh, screw lead and W detection actually are developed in Python and others are developed in R. However, in our um, package, you can just uh, install the standardized uh, uh, R and uh, Python, and you just uh, and then run all the code in R. So you can use both package from R and Python. So also uh, this package can install other packages that required for downstream analysis and visualization. So for example, if you want to ggplot use ggplot two or other uh, say cluster method, you don't have to uh, independently install them. So our package can provide all the current uh, popular methods. So for example, so uh, say uh, our package now are in G, uh, GitHub. So you can just run this line command in R and it can automatically install all the current methods and the downstream analysis package and the visualization package. Uh, so here uh, we also uh, save our uh, uh, real data sets with uh, ground truth subject labels and a synthetic data set that used in our previous uh, benchmark study on um, public uh, repository so that um, everyone can use it to benchmark your study or, or benchmark your method or develop a new method. So the next func uh, functionality is to execute user specified W detection methods on multiple data sets. So here um, I show one example. Uh, so here, suppose we save all the uh, real data sets, 16 real data sets under this uh, folder, and you can uh, use this function to read all of them to create a list in your R uh, environment. And then you specify uh, which W detection you want to run. And then you save the method in this variable. And then we can just use this fun scores uh, function to execute all the methods you specified. And then uh, on the all the data sets you read into R. And then you don't, by using this, you don't have to run each method on each data set. So you don't have to uh, write a for loop by yourself. It's just very clear and you can just run them in one line. And then after that, after that, we obtain all the W score and we save them in this list. And next step is, uh, say we want to check the general uh, prediction accuracy on those uh, real data sets, then we can just uh, plug in this uh, score list into this find AUC, find, uh, a, oh, sorry, it's a typo, find AUC, uh, uh, oh, sorry, no typo, find AUC, they're all function. And uh, to specify, we want to show the AUPRC and the AURC, these two measurements to measure the overall detection accuracy. And then uh, you can save the result for each data set per uh, method. Uh, into this list. And uh, then in reality, you also want to, uh, based on your understanding about how many W's you want to detect, you can set up a threshold in this example, 10% on the, on the top of those W scores and get, give it a cutoff so that you can call a uh, which uh, cell in your data set are W's and save the result here. And then finally, you can based on your call uh, on the W's to calculate precision recall and a true negative rate of identified W's. So basically what we showed here is a bench, uh, the second part of this code is a benchmark part. So basically you give the function, the true label, the data, and you can show the performance. And the first part is a general uh, running part. Uh, you can run, uh, you can use those, those codes on your uh, you, on your study, if you want to identify any um, uh, identify W's on any data sets you have. 
So uh, next, we want to introduce some visualization functions. So we know to uh, give a pretty visualization is not an easy thing in R, right? So you have to uh, use ggplot2 and do a lot of trick uh, to give a good figure. Here, we just uh, integrate all those details into some uh, very simple functions. For example, here, we automatically visualize detection accuracy. So this figure visualizes the AUPRC for each method on 16 uh, real data sets. So you can see here for each data set, it's a box plot. And the, the, the function is very easy. First, we just uh, translate the previous uh, list uh, that keep our uh, pre-calculated AUPRC and AURC into this list to data frame function and indicate we want to show a box plot. Then it will automatically translate, transform all those uh, lists into a uh, data frame that can be visualized by uh, ggplot2. And then we use plot box function to uh, show the figure uh, on our uh, data frame. So you can just, uh, this figure is just uh, generated by these two, um, two commands. Uh, so the next example is to show still the plot on a pre-calculated uh, recall uh, based on your uh, call of doublets. Still, is the grammar is similar, so we put the so pre-calculated recall list and indicate it is a box plot, translate them into a data frame, and then we just uh, plot this uh, pre -ca this calculated data frame and show uh, the figure here. And you can do it for a precision and a true negative rate. So if you want to implement or draw these two figures by say ggplot2, so you will have several pages, or I would say one page, at least one page code, code to, uh, to draw them. And that's uh, in our benchmark study, we realized it's very important to tune your hyperparameter uh, on different data sets because hyperparameter will have a big effect on how your method performs. So we offer this functionality which can search for optimal op uh, hyperparameters on real data sets with ground truth stability annotations. Uh, so here is an example. We first read one single data set and it's uh, ground truth labels. And then we just use this find parameter function and give our uh, data label and indicate when we want to uh, tune this uh, hyperparameter on a uh, method screw lead. And the criteria to tune is AUPRC. And then we just uh, give uh, our, uh, our, our choice of for different hyperparameters. And our function will automatically do a great search uh, that includes all the combination of different hyperparameters on these data sets and output the best uh, combination in terms of this AUPRC, okay? Then after that, uh, you can use the hyperparameter found on the data set uh, to redo the W detection, try to give you better performance. For example, here, we still use our original find score function uh, and give it our data and uh, uh, just the data and method but this time we plug in the best performance of uh, the best parameters we have. So in real world applications, we can we suggest user can uh, use optimal hyperparameter obtained on similar data sets. For example, the similar tissue, similar experiment technique and tune them on those similar data sets and borrow the optimal parameter on your data set. Uh, here, I want to introduce uh, one uh, downstream analysis example. Uh, this one is cell clustering. So basically, uh, we want to do cell clustering after W detection, try to see how the W detection improve or uh, cell clustering. So first we detect cell clustering on our data set, use our pre-specified methods. And then uh, we uh, call our doublets based on a different a sequence of doublet reads. And next, uh, we, uh, we remove all those identified doublets from our data set. So we keep all the uh, data sets after doublet detection in this list. And finally, we use this clustering.all function 
to plot uh, to identify do clustering cell clustering on this upper uh, detection uh, w detection uh, data set so basically this function implement the Leuven clustering in red package it's a very popular cluster method so uh, in one command and then after that we can visualize the result this is our visualized uh, figure uh, by using these two lines still we translate or uh, result uh, in a list to a data frame and then we use plot heat map and uh, to show uh, this uh, to this result to show this result and here cluster equal to two means uh, we use the data set with ground truth number of cluster equal to two uh, equal to four so then you can see this figure and the last uh, downstream analysis example we want to show is cell uh, trajectory. So basically, uh, we want to see how the W detection can help us to remove all of all those superior uh, uh, trajectory formed by Ws. So still, uh, this time we include uh, we construct a function from a trajectory. You can plug in your uh, original uh, data set with all the Ws. And uh, and also the labels, and uh, so this one we call the contaminated data. So then this function will use the popular method the spin shot to construct your W uh, to construct your cell trajectory. So this will give you this figure. So as you can see here, all those red dots are Ws, and it it actually bias your analysis because originally the clean data only have two tra trajectory, but the, on contaminated data we have the third one. And then uh, to generate the first clean figure, we first remove all the doublets. Uh, and then we still use find a trajectory to uh, perform trajectory inference on the clean data, data set to obtain the first figure. So as you can see here, this is the negative effect of doublets in this uh, analysis. And then we just uh, follow the previous code to conduct doublet detection. Uh, uh, based on all those methods and remove 20% uh, doublets and then uh, get our after removal uh, data set. And then for each method, we uh, plot their uh, trajectory inference after removing doublets to obtain all those uh, figures. As you can see here, uh, all those methods actually removed this superior um, uh, trajectory. Uh, there's one method that failed to do that, but most of the method can successfully reconstruct these true uh, 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 true two uh, trajectories. So uh, there's some uh, before is uh, some examples of key functionality in our package. So we also provide a step by step protocol to uh, run all those uh, different functionality on a wide range of real and synthetic data sets. So uh, this is, you can check our uh, uh, protocols here. And this protocol provide ready to use R code in the standard R programming language. You can just copy all the example code to get your result on your computer. And it also shows the detail about installation, data downloading and troubleshooting uh, and the computational environment and also estimate the running time. All those information are included on, uh, or in our protocol. So uh, to, summary, uh, to summarize, so W collection package unifies the installation and execution of W detection methods. It provides convenient functionality for downstream analysis and visualization. Uh, also, it's very easy to include new methods and the benchmark data set to keep the benchmark study up to date. So basically, uh, including new methods is our job. We will keep updating the package as long as there's new methods coming out. But uh, as long as the users have their own uh, data sets, if they know the, uh, the, the ground truth of labels, it, they can do their own benchmark to get new results. Also, our package can provide transparency and the reproducibility in this benchmark field and also in this W detection field. Uh, so our work is now is under, uh, is, uh, is under review at Star Protocol and you can check our uh, software on uh, GitHub and also our large scale benchmark data sets on uh, 
on this re repository. Uh, so you can just uh, search Subbit collection and you can get all those information. Uh, so that's all the information I want to introduce. Finally, I want to thank uh, uh, my advisor, Jessica Lee, for all her um, guidance and help in this project. Also, I want to thank all the current member of JCLCAS group, the Junction of Statistics and Biology in Department of Statistics for all your help. And uh, so that's all. And I, I'm happy to take your comments and the questions. Thank you.